I'm Gail Z, Director of Teaching and Learning, and this week I have the pleasure of introducing you to Carolyn McAnders. Uh, Carolyn has been a critical friend for us here at ASD for many years now, and it's great that we can have her come back over time. Um, what we're doing uh, this week with Carolyn is we have um, had in place adaptive schools protocols, strategies, and this is the group that Carolyn works with. We first put these in place in about 2006. And as you realize, we've had a lot of turnover of faculty. Um, and some of those things that have been institutionalized, we feel like we need to revisit, re-energize, refresh with our incoming faculty, people that have come in since that time. So we thought now is the time to do that. So welcome, Carolyn. Thank you. We're glad you're back. So would you like to tell us about some of the work that you've been doing with our teachers, our teacher leaders first, what you've been doing these last two days? First, it's, it's been my absolute pleasure to be here and to be supportive. And for the last few days, I've worked with um, teacher leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, what I want to say about that group is they are some of the most committed, passionate, intelligent, uh, leaders uh, in the school that I've worked with and uh, what we did was we focused on their from the leadership aspect their uh, facilitating uh, groups of colleagues and supporting those colleagues in being a thoughtful collaborative group that um, um, works together in ways that continues to improve student learning. Some of the topics that we uh, talked about uh, were, uh, how do you develop um, working agreements so that you're creating a psychologically safe mm -hmm. environment that's not necessarily comfortable, but there's safety so that people can really dig deep and talk about those things that matter most uh, around teaching and learning. Another topic we explored was uh, five principles for successful meetings. Mm -hmm. Often groups will get together and, and sometimes they'll languish a little bit because um, uh, looking for the best ways to stay on one topic because if we're enthusiastic we can easily lose focus. So how do you stay on one topic and not lose the enthusiasm for that topic? How do you stay with one process at a time? What are some ways to balance participation in groups so that everybody finds voice and feels that they're heard? And also, how do you deal with natural tensions mm -hmm. that will occur in yeah. groups? Because when groups sign up for collaboration, they sign up for conflict. Because conflict is really about differing ideas that are wanting to surface and live in the same place at the same time. Mm -hmm. So this was about helping the teacher leaders to become more resourceful so that they could help their colleagues become more resourceful so that they can help students become more resourceful. And I love some of the conversations that, that came up today and some of the wonderings that teachers had about asking how they can do a better job with being, being leaders of their teams and I think that's going to be a great set of strategies for them to be able to move themselves and their teams forward, so well, thank you for that. It will be. Um, they are um, they think of the most provocative questions mm -hmm. that um, they're really interested in application. Mm -hmm. Going beyond um, this is some theory to yeah. now how do I use it respectfully right. with my colleagues to gain their trust mm -hmm. and to move meetings forward and um, that was some of the main things that they were wondering about. Mm -hmm. It's like, let's take this theory and let's apply it. And these are my friends, mm -hmm. after all. And how do you support your friends? And so managing the tension of being 
friends and then being facilitator mm -hmm. was a, a recurring reoccurring theme throughout these three days. Right. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, we're going to have a whole school session tomorrow, which doesn't happen very often at ASD. We tend to do PD kind of embedded. So it's one of the few exciting times that we have to have a full school, everybody together, teachers and leaders, and even some of our support staff as well will be there tomorrow. Um, so can you tell us what we can be looking forward to and what we're going to be doing in, those, in that session tomorrow? And so I'm thinking about the purpose. Mm -hmm. The purpose is to, um, to refocus for some people and to introduce some very foundational um, strategies, structures, and tools for being a collaborative culture here. And I think it's very wise to invite everybody in, into the process. And so what they can look forward to is um, how do you have uh, productive conversations no matter what your role is? And how do you collaborate even if there's just two of us? What are some ways we can um, maintain a relationship and talk about our work in deep ways so they can expect tools and strategies and structures for making that happen. They'll explore the difference between dialogue, which is for understanding, right, and discussion, which is for making a good decision. Mm -hmm. That's really important for our group so that they can put their energy in um, the right place so that they can really settle into a conversation in appropriate ways. And then we'll take a look at seven norms of collaboration that support people in dialoguing and discussing. And those norms are a communication toolkit that even students can use. Mm -hmm. So it's both for students and can be used for the adults. And tomorrow we'll be um, focusing on adult relationships using these tools. So I'm really pleased. I love that we're going to be working together as a whole school. I love that it's a revisit and a re-energizing at the same time and really putting everybody into a, a common place where vocabulary, mm -hmm. where everything in terms of the protocols are all understood with a common understanding and I think that's a wonderful thing to be able to do for a school. So Absolutely. I thank you for that. So let's have a look at what that might look like. Paraphrase works every single time. I call it the winner, winner, chicken dinner paraphrase. <laughs> because you want to put it in your pocket. Parents love to hear, so what's really important to you is. Children need love to hear, so what's really important to you is. A colleague loves to hear, so what's really important to you is. Your spouse or spice loves to hear, so what's really important to you is. Okay? So you're trying on active listening. Trying on active listening. All right? Find an eye contact partner, not at your table. Share your most important point. Happy. And practice. So to me, that was the most important. So what is important to you is that we are all on the same page with our professional development and we can produce and function uh, positively. Collaboratively yeah? in a group, exactly. Yeah, awesome. Good. Uh, all the people in identities. So it means we have a chance to help our students who need to be supportive and 